And here we go. Welcome, everybody. This is PMP Weekly, episode 126. It is 10th of May and spring is coming. It was snowy yesterday in Helsinki, but spring is coming. I'm confident on that. Now, um, my name is Lesa Juvonen, and in the PMP Weekly, we always go through the latest and greatest on the Microsoft 365 news from the Microsoft and from the community. And we typically have a visitor, which we talk about the career and the impact of, let's say, the last year and all of that stuff uh, with our with the visitor. I can't, I just can't make this intro work. It, just, it went really well. <laughs> now, <laughs> on a scale from one to 10, how likely would you re- recommend this show based on an intro? <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it started really well. Now, okay, so, yeah, it <laughs> let's, does, check, right? so let, let's do a quick intro. So, my name is Esa Yuban, I'm a program manager in my Microsoft 365 platform site. And with me as a co host is Waldeck. <laughs> let's show it to you. But it went really well, didn't it? <laughs> My name is Valik Mastekat and I am Cloud Developer Advocate for Microsoft 365 and Microsoft. And as Vesa already said, today with us is a guest. Yes. From the US, one of our MVPs, DRCS. Good morning, DRC. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good to have you here. Uh, can you do a quick intro? Who are you and what do you do? And where are you based? In the US uh, is a quite big, sure. big state. Uh, so I'm DRC. Um, I'm based out of Rhode Island in the United States. Um, if you don't know where that is, think of Boston and go south about 45 minutes. I have been in the SharePoint and Microsoft 365 world for about 12 years now. Gosh, time flies. Um, and I specialize more on the UI UX side of the world, um, information architecture and user adoption piece. When did you, so coming back on, um, well, every single MVP which we talk around nowadays is like, yeah, I come from a SharePoint background, but now I'm focusing on Microsoft 365, which is quite often the case. How did you end up uh, being part of the, or getting the MVP? What's your kind of a story on that? Um, well, when I first started, um, I just loved being at like the SharePoint Saturdays and getting to know people and present um, you know, some of the lower level topics, I always felt like I was never at the time good enough to present on like the level 300s and things like that. But I found that I could help people that were just like me and just getting started way back when. And that's kind of been my passion is continuing to help those people that are just starting to have to do it for their jobs or things like that. And just kind of, you know, life evolved over time. And I found that I this was a, a passion that I had, and the MVP was fortunately a, a reward for that passion, but I would do it nevertheless. Yeah, you've been doing quite a lot of blocking and, and then presentations whenever that was possible. Nowadays, we're still in this. <laughs> now we're in the virtual it's world. It's still possible. Yes. <laughs> well, it's, it's possible. possible. It's yeah. different. Yeah, it's different. It's quite <laughs> different. There's a conference every single day, apparently. So. <laughs> <laughs> there is there is you know teams fatigue for sure yes, yeah, yes. Exactly, exactly. But uh, nothing taken away from the, any of the conferences which are being organized, but uh, it's it's one of those things we're seeing a massive uptake on the remote uh, conferences for sure. And then I think people are getting tired of, of having these meetings, even though it's great to see people, <laughs> but <Yeah>. still. <laughs> it, it'll, it'll come around, hopefully. I mean, things are, are hopefully starting to get better in a lot of places and hopefully things will continue to improve over the next yeah. few months and years. So. I got even my my first lesson uh, scheduled today, so it is not today, but on Saturday this week. So at least in certain parts of Europe, this is already getting the right. (laughs) Sorry, Valdek. (laughs) Not in this part of of, of, of Europe. No. Keep our fingers crossed for you, man. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So later. Yeah. Apparently, like my my turn will be at the end of June. Mm. Okay. So. And then the second. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, sorry, not, not necessarily a super funny thing, but hey, uh, things necessary. are. I mean, it is important stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, uh, Darcy, uh, let's let's talk about slightly your history. So, how did you end up actually being in IT? What was the, well, how did you, from school directly, were you in, uh, interested in IT, or was there something else? Yeah, so it was. I never had an interest in IT at all actually. Like I went to school for music. I was a professional musician. I taught high school band. Um, Like I loved being a teacher and and music was my passion. 
And um, in the United States, it's it's kind of a, a really complicated topic to be on because I, I was in a district that was losing funding and um, the school that I taught at unfortunately lost funding to continue having a music program. So I found myself being a highly educated person in my field without a job. And right. so um, like many other people, um, I, I had a friend who was the at the time the director of IT at a major university in California. And he was like, hey, if you go learn how to do this thing called SharePoint, I will give you a job. And I went, a oh. job sounds amazing. <laughs> so I it was back um, the late SharePoint 2007, early 2010 days. And um, I spent four months with a laptop and a sandbox playing around in the engineering library of UC Davis, trying to learn everything I could about SharePoint. And funny enough, I never actually ended up working with him, but he now actually works for Microsoft in the Azure space. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of funny how, you know, we we evolve over time. And, you know, as my skill set evolved, more opportunities, um, you know, evolved. And there was a lot of people from the community that really helped my career over, over time and, and saw the, the positives that could come out of it. Yeah. And then you, you started focusing directly on the UX and the end user side of the house or, or mm -hmm. how, how did that, that was I, not from a day one or? Yeah, I did. So um, it was, it was really funny. Another MVP, um, Eric Overfield had a UI UX company based out of the little town in California I lived in. And he was kind of the first person to um, way back when, you know, give me an opportunity to really be in the SharePoint space, not just trying to do it on my own and learn. So it was kind of a natural progression. And I love design. I love art and, um, you know, that creative side. And so it was kind of the perfect opportunity to apply a passion of mine directly into the tech space in an area I felt comfortable in. So, yeah. And that okay. was probably then custom master bases and CSS and and making oh, the SharePoint not look like SharePoint. The, pu the public facing websites. <laughs> so exactly, yes. exactly. Yes. No, we're I talking. Think we, all of us three have been there. So. <laughs> yep. I I remember building all of those and wondering what all this code was. And this is back in the day where you know my boyfriend at the time was like the you know IT guy at the university. So it was kind of like you know honey, can you help me set up my computer so that I can go do all this other stuff? <laughs> <laughs> We've all evolved since then. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. Yeah. But, but so, so the one thing I wonder about is like you've been around since you said late 2007, early 2010. How, how do you see evolving SharePoint UX and UI from there until now because like many things have changed like we do things differently things work differently they look differently how do you see it so i think there's a lot of good things that have come with changes over the years um and obviously there's a lot of bad habits that we got into that we've had to break or figure out different ways to do it um i like that there's a lot more consistency in things now, but it's really difficult because in a lot of clients, really the person who's driving the look and feel of the internet comes from marketing or yeah. comes from communications. And they are looking at public facing websites for examples of what they love because, you know, obviously internets are not, you know, viewable by the general public. So it's it's a really tough conversation to go, okay, I see what you're what outcome you're trying to achieve. Let's go talk about the different ways we can try to get there. And um, a lot of the design that I do nowadays isn't so much designing pages, but it's trying to design those custom experiences that fill a business process. Like things like, you know, locations directories or people directories, um, you know, trying to do integration work and things like that. So there's still a lot of design work out there, but it's since we don't have access to do a lot of the things that we used to, it's more figuring out how we can make those customizations fit in to SharePoint and not stand out like a sore thumb. So it's it's just slightly different ad adaption. Yeah. How, how are you actually saying the big push off also on the team side? So are you seeing more uh, also teams related work for you or, or is it still on a SharePoint uh, or what, what's the demand from a, for, for your customer? 
funny enough, most of my demand from customers is not Teams um, because I think they all just kind of picked it up and I think my my team's work will really come in the next year once like the fire hydrants turn off and they were, you know, they're trying to yeah. actually get their business models back. I think everybody just turned teams on in an effort to get through the pandemic and they'll go through and do the cleanup and governance and all that stuff later. Uh, you know, we all kind of know how that one happens. Um, <laughs> right. Most of my my recent work, a lot of it has actually been migrations from like Box to SharePoint. Yep. Um, and like terabytes of data that have to be re-architected and brought in. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a slightly different focus than what I would thought it would be. It's it's kind of interesting. Yeah, but it is an interesting thing, right? Because like 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 you said, demands very much come and go in in waves, and they're driven by what's going on around us, right? So even though like you might be an expert in UI UX, but people need this thing, and then you already see that in a while they will need to clean things up, reorganize, re-architect things where, so there will be more shift on IA as opposed to UX and UI, right? So it's like, it's very much seasonal work in a way. It is, and the interesting thing with Teams is that Teams has done an amazing job at branding and having their own voice, especially in the community and with clients and partners. However, I think like one of the really important messages that's getting lost is that great, you have teams. Guess what? You also have OneDrive. You also have SharePoint as a result of that. And I feel like a lot of that messaging is getting lost um, and that people are signing up for teams and not not understanding really how everything is integrated. And that actually, I think, causes more problems because, um, you know, people are like, I, I just want teams. I don't want any SharePoint. And I'm like, that's not actually how this is going to work. <laughs> yeah. what? It's all SharePoint. <laughs> Always was. <laughs> it's, uh... I got to hand it to teams, amazing marketing, but it's it's uh, it's a little bit interesting, you know, on, on the reality side sometimes. Yeah. So, so what's your bet or prediction then on the Microsoft Viva connection side of the house now that we're getting it more visible for, so, for us? I think Viva has tremendous opportunity, but I think it's also one of those with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. We saw when Delve originally came out and Delve was kind of the first area where Microsoft tried to put the discovery of content and people together. And it scared people because all of this information started to boil to the top without context and without users understanding that there's security around that and that you only see things like it caused a lot of harm because okay. people didn't understand. Um, and it's my it's my fervent wish that as Viva starts rolling out is that it's going to start bringing a lot of things to the surface just like Dell did way back when, but in a much more powerful way that can impact a business a lot faster and for both positive and negative. So I think it'll it'll be a mix of, you know, making sure that governance and guidance are in place and change management's in place to be able to handle rolling out Viva, as well as understanding all the integration points. I think you're, t I think companies that are going to be the ones that roll out Viva, like the major Fortune 500 companies and up, um, are gonna need a really strong technical team to be able to do the backside of Viva and make sure that it's going to perform and be able to be tuned to to the business. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Do you have do you have any, let's say, preemptive tips for them that they could already start applying now or thinking about already now be, before they actually do a rollout? Um, I think a lot of it is figuring out, we know that there's certain verticals of what Viva is going to take into account, like things like projects, um, as an example. Understanding what projects you want to be discovered or known in the in the industry or in your, in your tenant are going to be really important. Understanding what those verticals and topics and things like that are and pre-planning them now would probably be a really good idea because that way if you choose to turn it on and do a pilot or start working with it, 
um, you already are going to understand what are those major pieces you want to be shown and can tune it for that. And then also some of those things that maybe aren't right and you know you're going to have to change the descriptions on the topic cards and you know pages and things like that. I think it's start understanding what you what content you have and what's important now. Which is always actually super, super, super valuable of having a clear understanding how your platform is being used and who's using that and what the content is there. So for sure. So and that comes back on the governance planning, which is super, super important for sure. Yep. And it can't be IT doing it. Yeah. It has to be so much <laughs> well, I think, I mean, yeah. So, uh, well, but I guess that, like probably they have their own governance to do, right? Their own, like they need to have inventory of their machines, computers, and systems and access and whatnot. But then there's everything else that it's not related to IT that shouldn't be done by them, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's It's got to be a partnership. And I think a lot of companies right now are struggling with that. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I'm I'm excited and yet terrified <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> So coming back on something what you said, because this is something which we talked with Waldeck quite a few times related on, on the adoption of teams and, and what you're seeing from your side of the, your region related on the customers that basically everybody was forced to just enable the teams and didn't have a time really think through what does it mean and the chase management and everything else and just deal with it. Um, and that's probably something what we can then see that, uh, for example, adaption of the extensibility models and solution integration and everything else, um, mm -hmm. it's growing but it's not like over the roof yet. Um, is that, um, uh, hmm. how, how would it be your kind of a prediction? Or do you have any thoughts on when or on when will the, the maturity model be more mature? <laughs> when August will be the customer? 23. Uh, yeah. August 23. <laughs> will it happen this year or, or what's the, what's the uh, kind of, a, what are you saying with customers? For the extensibility story or? As an example of, on Teams, okay. yes. So I think there's a lot of things coming with extensibility that are really great. Like I, I love the idea of being able to bring in the cards, um, the adaptive cards to do things. I think a lot of organizations are still trying to figure out what should belong in teams and what experiences belong there versus what experiences belong in their more traditional intranets and SharePoint um, and trying to bring those together. I think Vivo will do a little bit of that, um, hopefully, but I think, the biggest part is people don't want to <clears throat> go to several different places for content. And right now, I think the biggest driver of that is the fact that too many organizations that I've worked with are saying Teams is for communication only, right? It's it's your meetings. It is basically like your replacement for Skype, and that's it. Like, they are not really utilizing Teams for the content and the yeah. collaboration piece. They're trying to use it solely as your chat client, um, which kind of does Teams a disservice, but that's how like a lot of business are trying to compartmentalize where their services lie. Um, yeah. And I think it scares them, you know, when things are very hybrid and cross-platform um, to create a cohesive experience. I think it's just, a lot of businesses aren't there yet. Um, so I think the, the platform is going to get there long before the businesses are ready for it, which I think as a result is going to return in a lot of IT departments saying, turn this off or we don't want this yet because we're not prepared to have those conversations. So I don't know. I think it, I think it'll be interesting. I think the developer community is really strong and there's a lot of great things coming out of it. I just don't know that a whole lot of businesses are ready for it yet. And yeah. I think until the pandemic and everything else like that really calms down and businesses can start refocusing internally on, on those things, um, it might be delayed a little bit as far as maturity. Makes, makes perfect sense. Um, something what we're seeing here and there as well, it's a massive opportunity. Uh, also we want to help people to adapt the platform, but um, there's, there's say different opinions and the maturity level in country and regional level is different. In certain countries, people are more advanced and then in certain countries they're not, which is, or in regions, uh, big, big differences. Now, coming back on a, a completely different topic before we go to the articles. Now, you are a good example of a, sorry, uh, changing topics while they, <laughs> so you're a good example of a, a successful ID woman or a, a woman. What, how, any, any tips related on 
uh, or what's your experience related on the community which we have on the Microsoft 365 and any tips for anybody who would be looking into uh, coming to IT? Um, I think the biggest thing is find a champion. Find someone who's going to be in your corner and be willing to not see what you know today, but see what you're capable of learning um, and who can help champion you towards, you know, better projects or being in the community. Um, the community itself is kind of its own interesting animal. Um, we've all been a part of it for a long time. And <laughs> it, like any community, there's both good and, and bad things that can come yeah. out of it. So I think a lot of it is making sure you stay true to yourself. You know, write because you enjoy writing, you know, blog, do whatever you enjoy in the community because you love it. If you're if you're trying to use it for like affirmation or to to try to have a better sense of self, um, it's not going to happen. <laughs> That's not a good way to look for it. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a lot of more of, you know, keep keep your friends really close and, you know, help each other out. Um, but make sure that you're comfortable in your own skin a little bit. I think it was actually Emily Mancini who said exactly the same thing the week before. Yeah, two weeks ago, we had her on the on the show, and and she was saying also that finding a mentor and finding a, a somebody who can help on the on this journey is is a big thing. And I think there's a lot of people who are willing to help on that journey for sure. Uh, it's just a matter of finding those right connections because, sure, there's always bad apples here and there, but we don't need to worry about the bad apples. And um, let's just focus on the on the and the good people, hopefully. So. Oh yeah, and I guess also with the thing like mentoring, like like for a. A big part it's it's like the willingness the willingness is is important but there's also this uh, personal click like it has True. to match sure like you have to yep. find a person who is on the same wavelength as you are right yep. mm -hmm. yeah and it's it's something that you know i i've personally been struggling with for for at least at least the last year is you know i'm at the point in my career where I know what I know. I also am very well aware of the things that I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and trying to figure out where where even I fit in these days is, is sometimes a, a really yeah. difficult challenge to work through. And it's I think it's mostly yeah. because the lack of, you know, personal connections with people. Everything is very, you know, 10 minute, you know, Teams calls and, and runs. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. It's very much that. Oh, so we talked about community we talked about ux career we talked about many things there's but there's we we talked even about about the music but there's one thing that we didn't talk about yet oh good point yes oh, <laughs> archery <laughs> archery <laughs> you have passion for archery right you are a pro is that is that the right way to say it uh, I am a professional archer, um, and I've I've been um, on the pro circuit for about thirteen or fourteen years. Um, I've competed in world championships, Pan American Games. I was an Olympic alternate, um, and I actually um, just switched back to Olympic style, and I'm, I'm hoping to see if I can make a run for Paris in 2024 Olympics. So oh, wow. we, we will see what happens. Um, I actually just got back from our a second national competition yesterday night um, in Florida, and um, it's it's kind of feel like you're, you know, you're starting at the bottom of a very long ladder to try to work your way back up in another style again. But it's something I, I absolutely love, um, and I'm really glad to be able to get back to it. But it's it's kind of really scary getting on planes right now to travel and knowing sure. that if you don't, you know, that last 20 years worth of work could go down the drain. So it's it's kind of a fine balance at the moment. Um, but yeah, no, I, it's absolutely amazing, and I can't wait till I get to go teach my youth groups and stuff again, and you know, have that community back. Yeah. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. That's really, really cool. Now, uh, should we do some articles and then we'll do, let's do some let's, let's a do discussion articles. in the end? Let's, let's run through some articles. Not that many actually articles from Microsoft this week, uh, which is every now and then the, the, this massive difference between the weeks. But hey, it is what it is. From last week, uh, from Nicole Woon and, and Holland, uh, use SharePoint as a new uh, site template, uh, which is now available as an Amphod out of the box templates. And uh, so there's work being done also for third party and custom templates. And this is something which we basically, 
well, it, it originates from the SharePoint lookbook, uh, and now some of those templates are kind of getting uh, graduated to be part of the product, which is actually kind of cool. Really? Um, this so is we're, and we're looking into doing this kind of a similar model in the future as well. So testing out templates in the lookbook, and then those who are good enough or they're being used the most, uh, then they're getting graduated on the, on the product as well. There are certain limitations of this one still. Again, one step at a time, uh, but third party templates uh, are coming up and are being planned, uh, absolutely. And then integration with Microsoft Teams is being planned as well. So we can actually maybe in the future create solution templates which impact then Teams and SharePoint uh, all around, which is really, really cool. So really awesome stuff. Now, uh, from Ian Mikutel from Microsoft 365 Block, new ways of using Microsoft uh, Whiteboard for education. Uh, so good example of that one. And this is actually really, really cool on, on examples on, on teaching and drawing stuff and, and reusing uh, images. So really cool scenarios for sure. And making that teaching remotely more useful. Right way of saying that maybe. Uh, understanding Office add-ins runtime, uh, so a new article on the developer block side of the house. So basically what's the latest and how things are working and, and what are the impacts and the security infos, SSOs, other platforms and all of that. So a good summary if you are looking into Office setting guidance. On the craft side, there's some uh, EDU uh, new APIs available. So new stuff available related on uh, what, what were this uh, assignments API. Never heard of, but it is. So yeah, you can automate stuff. Uh, SharePoint Syntax, slightly older article actually, but we missed this because it's in the SharePoint Syntax block, and so we didn't actually notice that. Uh, this is really hard to follow up on all of the different articles and blocks out there. Uh, but uh, SharePoint Syntax has new APIs actually being exposed through the BMP uh, API uh, SDKs, which is a slightly strange approach. But of course, in the longer run, our uh, intention is that everything is going to go out also for Microsoft Craft. And there's also BMP PowerShell commandlets for automation. And tomorrow, well, today, if you're watching this, when this video is going to get released, there's going to be a SharePoint monthly community call where we're going to talk about all of this stuff. So Sean Squires and, and uh, Bert Janssen is going to do that. Uh, Julie Turner had a SharePoint app catalog development tips, uh, articles, really cool stuff, a lot of, lot of uh, excitements and, and good insights on how to do automation and how to, how to make things happen. I think it is using CLI, yes it is, uh, surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. Yay. Uh, well, it's always happy to see those. Upgrade your SharePoint framework projects to 1.12.1 with CLI for Microsoft 365. Is this now the theme of the, this week? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but basically, how do you update the latest version? And the CLI is, is always helping there. It is absolutely, it provides a detailed step-by-step -step guidance on how to get started on doing things. So really, really cool stuff. Uh, Don Kirkham uh, had a call adding a custom formatting to uh, all list views uh, blog posts. So really on, on focusing on there and on how things work and how do we apply the formatting to all of the list views. And that's really cool as well. Um, Matt Jimison had to get started on new SharePoint app bar. So how does that work? And, and then there are, we talked about this one actually, Melissa talked about it uh, in her uh, community uh, demo as well, that you can temporarily disable that if it comes to say, no, I don't want to use it now. You can delay, um, delay that to be enabled, uh, but it's going to be enabled sooner or later. So it's good to get used to that one and how it actually works. Um, so that's a good article as well. Marcus Muller is back uh, from his parental leave. He was away okay. for a while, uh, getting a new baby, or first baby, I think. How to update it after? Well, the baby, it was, it, it, it was there already. He, he just left. He didn't good get point. a baby. Yeah. He... <laughs> Stop breaking <Okay>. Vesa. <laughs> that's the whole point of it, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How to update data with card with Teams messaging extension and using the Yo Teams generator for creating and that one. So cool article. He's working on the Teams uh, platform side. Uh, so really cool stuff from there. And then this story was absolutely brilliant. So Alison or Ali uh, had created a uh, SPFX uh, web card, which then she, together with her mom, demonstrated in the latest uh, SharePoint framework community call. So, um, and I think 
she blew the, everybody away uh, during this call. So they had a, a together demo uh, as the final demo from Thursday, from the 6th of May call, and it was absolutely brilliant. So I think people were already letting uh, Jeff Deeper know that, hey, maybe we should be recruiting her uh, in the development team. So it was also, really the great. one thing you didn't say is her age, right? Because Ellie oh, is I didn't. 14. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes. yes, really good point. So really, really good point. But hey, if a 14 year old can write ship and framework components, that's actually... and that is not taking anyway anything away from from her, right? Like like no no like no not at all no no anything. no no yeah not at all yeah. not at all. <laughs> they are not, not always me. easy. She is amazing. <laughs> yeah, really really cool stuff, and and the implementation is really cool using React and Graph Microsoft Graph APIs and all that stuff. Right. So absolutely brilliant implementation. And for anybody who's interested, have a look on the the uh, the recording from last week. This was absolutely brilliant. So there was two other demos, by the way, which was really really good as well. So Luis and Mohammed had a two awesome demos as well. But then Alison really blew everybody away as the <laughs> last demo. Uh, Sergey had a update on the SPFX FastServe, so new architecture better extensibility support for latest SPFX. So that's now out, and that's basically speeding up the native SPFX. Uh, bundling pipeline, so compiling stuff faster, so you can get your components out faster. And he's really good on, on the Webpack uh, optimization and all of that stuff, and that's what this one is all about. Michael Mendes had a restrict SharePoint list items attachments by file type using a custom form. Uh, so basically, how can we do that? How can we block the attach file option? Uh, in these things and what are the adjustments uh, to make that happen. And we are seem to be actually doing this in the Power Automate in this particular blog post. So, Power App. Sorry, yes, Power App. You are 100% correct. Well, it had the power, you know, like PowerPoint. Yes, definitely. It was a powerful application. Yes. Uh, and this one is really cool as well. So uh, Xiao Mendes uh, had a new organizational chart, uh, which is basically a really, really nice implementation for SharePoint 2019 as well. So the same implementation works for SharePoint Online and SharePoint 2019. Uh, it is not, on, uh, and because it's for on-premises as well, it's not using Microsoft Graph. Um, so, but it's really, really cool. Um, and if you are using an SharePoint 2019 and running an older version of SharePoint, well, that is an older version of SharePoint, um, then you can still get this kind of an extensibility and, and tooling available. Really, really cool stuff as well. Three uh, YouTube videos. So first of all, Paolo had a new video, uh, Paolo Pialorsi from PSS had a patching with Microsoft Graph SDK for .NET. So really cool video, six minutes, uh, the summary on that one. Good stuff. And I think he's smiling somewhere in here, uh, a long running joke. Then uh, Giuliano De Luca had a new a video as well, SharePoint Framework, what's new in 1.12.1. Uh, so doing live demos and, and these are really well organized as well. So uh, you can actually jump in exactly to the right topic, which you're interested on actually uh, seeing. So really, really cool stuff. And then uh, April had a new video, April Dunham for a card advocate for Microsoft around save Microsoft form attachments for SharePoint using Power Automate. So really cool as well. And then as a final article uh, from the Recording 365, uh, uh, Daryl and Daniel had a good discussion related on access files offline in Microsoft Teams mobile and how does it work and, and having, the, having the summary on that one. But that's it for the article side. So we have seven minutes. Wow, that is a record. That is a record. That was pretty Never had. I don't think we ever had so much time left at the end of the show. That, that's actually true. This is good. Or so much show left at the end of the time. Time for a game of Monopoly. Here we go. <laughs> Good. Uh, so, Darcy, uh, what what are you what are you working nowadays, and what's what's happening on this week? Anything interesting? What are you going to talk about? Um. Oh gosh. Or just archery, archery, archery. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My life is pretty much wake up, coffee, work, archery, repeat, um, and homework. Um, yeah. I'm actually trying to uh, finish up. Um, a second degree that I decided to be adventurous and go back to school for a few years ago. So um, I'm in my last year and unfortunately I'm stuck right now with an advanced calculus class. <laughs> That's, Ouch. I, um, uh, I have yeah. to say that 
I, so I'm a patch, bachelor for computer science, so I'm, I'm not a master graduate or anything, uh, which is a weird uh, thing as well, kind of weird, but hey, these things do happen. No, it's not, uh, I'm, I'm the same. Yeah, there we go. It's, it's but, not weird. And uh, there was, I can't remember, what, what's the what's the class where you do uh, financial calculations? What's that in, uh, in English? Mm -hmm. uh, or in statistics? Yeah, this, no, the, the debit and credit and all of that stuff. And I debit credit on financials, uh, so basically, Anyway, doesn't matter. So uh, calculations of the finance and, and all of that. I read it that course three times and on the last time I talked myself out of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got that. And then I also have a uh, mobile app development class. So that one's actually That's kind of cool. fun. I got Power to my first uh, Android app yesterday. And oh, um, yeah, it's Android and iOS development. But it's, it's kind of interesting because I've always wondered in how some of those things were created and how they kind of came to be and it's yep. kind of interesting to get very much a high level view of it because you never really do anything like completely useful in school but it's kind of <laughs> nice to understand oh, 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 <laughs> if you're a younger person you and you're still in school, you don't do school. <laughs> well, well, a, to a point you're <laughs> absolutely right if, if i look back at my school the it school I learned yeah, that's now. Yeah. I learned Java. I learned Sybase. I, I don't think I use a single thing that I learned at school. But it's broadens yeah. your view, right? So it's broadens like like understanding how hey, Android applications are, use. And, so, Android <laughs> applications are being built. It broadens the view on understanding that oh, there is a completely new world which I wasn't aware. So it's it's kind yeah. of still something additional. So broadens perspective. I think the biggest thing I've gone out of it, like I've taken C sharp classes and Java classes and Python classes and and I'm not a strong developer. Like I understand concepts and I can tell you the right direction you should go, but I'm not always going to be the best person to write it. Like I just know that about myself. Um, but it's really interesting working in the IT field and then going back for an IT degree in this case, because you see all these things that school is teaching that is actually incorrect or outdated, um, or we don't do that anymore. And here's the 10 reasons why kind of thing. Um, it would, it's been kind of an interesting journey of like, all right, how do you, how do you take what you learn and actually apply it to the real world versus, you know, trying to look back through the looking glass a little bit. So well, we will see. I've got, you know, eight months left of this torture and then um, another, you know, 15 month um, MBA program. And then I'm like, then I'm done, like done. So you think, <laughs> now. So you think now, by then you'll be like, oh, I'm done. What can I do next? Hey, yeah. And, and <laughs> well, there's not, nothing is going to, nothing is going to actually make it impossible to start studying when you're older. So it's completely fine. Why not? So uh, I, I think. Student loans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You guys don't have those in Europe. <laughs> yeah, but like that, that is the debit and credit, right? So Vesa is not the right person to talk to you about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm borrowing from my kids' lunch money. Um, <laughs> kids lunch money. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I think it, I think it's good. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see. I've got, you know, it was great actually, like. The best class I took was actually a database class because I've never really had to work with databases. So being able yep. to learn how to do them, how to do queries, how to actually like, you know, architect um, a database was something I found that was like really useful that I didn't know how to do. And I always kind of felt like the dumb person sitting in meetings when someone was talking about primary and secondary keys and me going, what the hell is that? So <laughs> Um, yeah. you know, it's, it's kind of helpful sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but there's also another interesting thing, right? Like at school, they teach you like all the, let's say, the right way to do things. And then reality goes like, no, no, no. Like you don't want to denormalize the database because performance wise, you actually might yeah. want to replicate some stuff. Like, yeah. But, but, but they say always, always okay, normal. Academically, no, no, no. it might have been the right way to do. And and then you exactly. denormalize the date to be its own table or something like that. Because we've seen yeah, that, that classic. Yeah, and then you character. learn about Cube and data warehousing. And, that, and that's a totally different game. It's like, no, yes. no, no. Like we build our database differently because we need to be able to do analysis on them. And you're like, I know nothing. <laughs> I basically think of something and then I call Ervin and go, Ervin, what do you think? And he's like, what the heck are you thinking? <laughs> I'm like, so, okay, got it. <laughs> one, one thing that, it, that, that is still, still true, 
do not use a GUID as your primary key. No. That is still a bad idea, even after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> or put your permissions, like, actually in the development. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, so, okay, that's happening this week. What about you, Waldek? <laughs> what? Uh, we have less preparations for build. I'm doing a, f a few things at build. Other than that, uh, the usual role, rhythm, uh, working yep. on stuff, developing CLI, same old, same old. Same old, same old. I'm going to actually take Thursday and Friday off this week. So I can't remember Thursday when I had a holiday, vacation correct. day off. So yeah. Thursday is a holiday, yes. Friday yeah. is a normal In day. Europe. It is all day in certain countries, not all of the countries. So apparently in Belgium, it's not a public holiday, but apparently in, in Netherlands it is. So oh, it's interesting today. I so, learned. Yes, because Bert is going to work apparently on Thursday. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, um, but any last words or anything? <laughs> Enjoy, summer is coming. Hopefully. Yes. <laughs> well, and thanks for all the fish. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, uh, thank you, <laughs> the RC, for joining us. Really good. Yeah, good to catch up as well. Good to see you. It's been really long, and and hopefully we'll get to meet in the in the upcoming conferences at some point. So we'll see. Whenever the world too. is taking us. So, and and for those who are watching or listening, thank you for watching, and listening, and thank you, Waldek, for joining as well. Um, and we'll be back with a new BMP Weekly within a week. So, cheers. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.